This is how you can use autocomplete with your discord.js version 14 bot commands. So let's go and get started. Before I show you how to do this, I'd like to say that if you'd like to get access to the source code from this video or other videos on my channel, you can do so by joining a channel membership on YouTube or a subscription over on Discord. On Discord, if you get the god or custom bot tier, you will get access to that source code. And of course, over on YouTube, if you get the super god or custom bot tier, you will also get access to that source code. And of course, on both platforms, if you get the custom bot tier, me and my team will code you a person personalized custom discord bot. If any of this is of interest to you, go ahead and click the links in the description below to get started with this and let's go and get into the video. So to start, we're going to go over to community and we can just go ahead and create a command to test this out. Now keep in mind, you can implement this system into any command you would like. Um, for example, you could do a YouTube searcher like I did in a couple videos ago um, and you could implement autocomplete with this. You could also do it with a lot of other things. We're going to be making an example so we can just go ahead and do autocomplete.js in here we can do const and we're going to get our slash command builder and we can do equals require and we're going to go ahead and get our discord.js package then we can go ahead and create our commands we can do module.exports we can do equals we're going to go ahead and open this up we can get data which is going to be our new slash command builder then after doing that we can go ahead and add a string option and we can do option arrow function and we can do option to set name this is going to be our query so we're going to be using the query for this we can go ahead and say a description and we can go ahead and say input a query and we can go ahead and set require to true. We're also going to go ahead and set auto complete to true as well. So then after doing that, we can add a comma. We can go ahead and do async auto completes and we can go ahead and get our interaction and we can go ahead and open this up. Now, just like before, for our commands, we're going to be using our interaction for the autocomplete. Now, you can also get the client, but you're going to have to get the client from the interaction. I'm going to show you all of that in just a second. All right, so to start off, we're going to go ahead and get our value. So we can do const value equals interaction to options dot get focused. And we can go ahead and set that to lower case so that when we check, it will be a little bit easier later. Then we can do const guild equals await interaction dot client dot guilds dot fetch. So we're gonna go ahead and get all of the guilds. And the reason for this is because for this example, we're gonna be using guilds. And what I mean by that is we're gonna be searching for the guild names that my bot is in. So we can go ahead and say let choices equals an array. Now keep in mind, because this is autocomplete, it uses arrays. So you are gonna have to have an array. Now you could have choices be maybe like test, you could have my name, you could have subscribe. That could be your array and it could be preset if you would like. And it would just be the same code. You wouldn't have to do any of the logic I'm about to write. But for me, I'm gonna leave all of that empty and I'm actually gonna push values to that array within this logic that I'm about to write. So we can actually do that. So we're gonna do await guild step for each. We can do async a guild. We can open this up. We can go ahead and do choices dot push, and we can go ahead and get guild dot name. And then after that logic is done, we're gonna have all of the guild names uh, within the choices array. So then we actually have to filter this. So we can do const filtered equals choices dot filter. We can do choice arrow function choice dot to lower case. So we can go ahead and check it into lower case. We can do dot includes because this is autocomplete. So we're gonna check to see what values have the query that we're searching for. And we can also go and input our value variable into that. Then we can come outside of that and we can do dot slice and we're gonna get zero and we can do 25. So the reason we're slicing it to 25 values is because for autocomplete, you can have a maximum of 25 autocomplete values. So you can't have 26, you can have 25 and below. So for me, I have a bot that's in about 200 servers, tutorial buys in a couple hundred servers, like I just said. So it has a lot of servers that's gonna be in this choices array. So for me not to crash the bot, I actually have to slice it down to the first 25 servers that's in the array. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And also this is supposed to be guild and not guilds. So after doing that, we can go ahead and say if, and we can do no interaction, we can just go ahead and return. Now keep in mind, we can return and do nothing because this is only the autocomplete. We haven't actually done anything with the reply yet. So we're not gonna be replying to anything. So we can just go ahead and return. Then after doing that, we can come down here and we can go ahead and say await interaction.respond. So it's a little bit different. It's gonna be respond and we can open this up and we can do filtered.map and we can get choice arrow function. So we can actually go ahead and open this up with parentheses and curly braces. And this is going to be like a choice in a string if you're familiar with that. Basically, it's gonna be name and you can get your value. Uh, so for me, that's gonna be choice because we're gonna be pulling it from the array. And our value is also going to be choice. Again, it's going to be pulled out from that array or from the filtered value from the array. 
um, basically. So after doing that, we can go ahead and add a semicolon here. And that's actually all we have to do for this part. So now we can actually go ahead and register that interaction. So we can add a comma here and we can do async execute just like we would do for a command. We can pass in our interaction and we can go ahead and open this up. So then in here, we can just go ahead and simply respond. You could technically do whatever you want. Um, but for me, I'm just going to go ahead and write a simple response so we can get our content in here. We can actually get the query that we got up here. Um, all we have to do is call out our string like we would usually do. So we can do const query equals interaction to options to get string. And that's going to be our query string, just like we would usually do, like I said before. So then in here, we can go ahead and say you selected. And we can go ahead and get our query. And we can go ahead and say guild. And I'm just going to go ahead and bold this so we can go ahead and see the name that we selected. And we're also going to go ahead and set informal on this message to true. So the names are a little bit difficult because you can't actually use the name for anything. You could technically filter uh, guilds with a name, but your bot can be in multiple guilds with the same name. So that's not going to be as effective. If you wanted to do this, you could actually go ahead and push in the ID and then you could go ahead and get as much information from that guild as you wanted, like the owner or something like that. Um, but for me, we're just using this as an autocomplete example, so we don't have to get too deep into that. So we're just going to end it off like that. So now the next thing we actually have to go ahead and do is we have to go into our index.js and we're going to go to the very top here under this function right here, this async function. We can come down here and we're going to go ahead and write a simple client.on event. This is going to be to handle the autocomplete. So just go ahead and bear with me. We're going to do client.on and we can go ahead and get events.interaction create. And we can do async interaction and we can go ahead and open this up. In here, we can go ahead and start by doing if. We can go ahead and say interaction.is autocomplete. Then we can just go ahead and open this if statement up. So we can do const command equals interaction dot client. Uh, and then we can do dot commands dot get and we can get interaction dot command name. So we're going to go ahead and get the client and the command name from that. And we can go ahead and then say if no command. So if the command does not exist, then we can just go ahead and return and do nothing. Um, and then we can go ahead and try and we can do await command dot auto complete. And we can go ahead and get our interaction just like that. And then we can go ahead and catch an error here and we can just go ahead and open this up and return. Now, like I said, this is actually very, very simple logic. Uh, this is going to be the part that registers the autocomplete. So when you type in, this is going to be the logic that inputs the rest of the responses into the menu that you're going to be able to choose from. All right. So with that, we're actually done with this entire system. Now, I actually did mess something up. I added a string, but not a name and description for the command. So we're actually going to go ahead and fix that real quick. So within the command, we can go ahead and set a name and this is going to be our auto complete. And then we can go ahead and set a description as well. Uh, in here, all we have to do is auto complete guide video or something like that. It doesn't have to be too complicated. So with that, we are actually done with this entire system and the auto complete command in general. So we can go ahead and restart the bot to test this out. All right, so over in the Discord server, we can go ahead and test this out. So we can go ahead and get our auto complete command here. So we can just go ahead and input maybe Minecraft because I do believe it. Yep, and there it is. So we have Minecraft and Minecraft server now. I don't know why, but this is a little bit uh, laggy and finicky. So as you can see here, it's going to load and it might go away. Uh, I don't really know what's wrong with it, but if we go ahead and select it here, as you can go ahead and see, it's going to go ahead and say you selected a Minecraft guild. So we can go ahead and do this again. We can get our autocomplete and hopefully it will actually load this time. Yep, it did. So it's going to give me all of the options I have to choose from here. Now, keep in mind, my bot is in about 200 servers and this is not 200 servers. This is 25 servers that the bot has filtered out of the array because we can only have 25 in this option here. Maybe we can go ahead and select one of my other servers, this one. As you can see, it's gonna go ahead and give me that name as well. Now, like I was mentioning before, we had the code right here. It was like name, and then we inputted choices, and then it had value, and we also put choices here. The name is the thing that you're actually gonna see in the autocomplete. So the list that came up, that's the name. The value is this. So the value is what's going to be displayed when you actually go ahead and get that string um, as a query variable. So let's say you wanted to get the ID and you still wanted to have the name. All you would have to do is put in the ID as the value. 
um, and then the name could stay choices or whatever, um, or the name in general. That way you could access the server's information and not just the name. Um, that could be something very useful uh, that you could do. Um, you could also do this, like I was mentioning in the beginning of the video for the YouTube video searcher. Um, for the name, it could be the name of the video and the value could be the link or something like that. Um, that's all up to you. So that's how you can code a autocomplete command for your discord.js version 14 bot. If you do need any help with this system, go ahead and join the server in the description below and we'll be happy to help you out. Just make sure you use the help channels right here and not general chat because we help in the help channels. Uh, and you might as well just join anyways because this is a pretty good coding community. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.